Hello everybody, this is Gregory with 5-Minute Catholic Apologetics, where 5 minutes of your time may get you to the divine. Today we're going to talk about the death of the Christian culture in regards to feasts. Now before we begin, let's start with a prayer. In nomine Patri, et Filii, et Spiritui Sancti, Amen. Gloria Patri, et Filii, et Spiritui Sancto, Succuts Oram Principio, et Nuc et Semper, et to Seculi Seculorum, Amen. I thought about this episode because uh, the woman who I am courting is a convert. She just came into the, the faith on Easter Vigil, so congratulations. Uh, she did a pretty quick two and a half month RCIA. She entered in January and boom, she's in. She went to a traditional parish. And so I was explaining to her, maybe she watched the episode I did on how to optimize your Easter. And I mentioned how Easter is celebrated for eight days. And she asked a good question. Her background is kind of you know, like go to the episode, why do Protestants church job? I would say as a whole, her last church was kind of Baptist. I was like, well, how do you celebrate for eight days? I was like, ah, this is a good demonstration of the decline of Christian culture. So in today's world, we're like, yeah, how do you celebrate Easter or Christmas is the same thing. It's an octave of Christmas day. We celebrate Christmas day for eight days. We celebrate Easter day from Easter to the following Sunday. Easter season, of course, goes, goes beyond that. But I think you have to go back in time to a time that I'll try to sketch out for you. So if you think of like 4th century, 9th century, 13th century, even 18th century, what was Easter tide or Paschal tide like? So everyone would be celebrating after especially the, the 40 days of Lent and the, the kind of the pinnacle of, of the Paschal Tridium, which is its own liturgical season, the shortest one, three days. People are going to be happy because Jesus Christ, our Savior, conquered death, right? So what, what are they going to be doing? They're going to be having the finest feast. They're going to be, whether it's, uh, you know, low-level serfs to the merchant class to the aristocracy, they're going to cut the fatted calf, as the prodigal father's Particle Son's father says, they're going to be having great foods, great sweets, the best wines. Again, there's nothing wrong with wine. It's drunkenness that's the problem. And you would see ferias or festivals going on during this time. So go back in time. You're in some small French village. Think of Belle and Beauty and the Beast or whatever it is that you want to think of. What's going to be going on? People are going to be lining the streets, walking the city squares, and promenading, you're gonna see music being played, you're gonna see family getting together, you're gonna see friends getting together, there's gonna be fairs, people are gonna be going to mass, and it's just happiness. People's families will be coming together, friends will be coming together every night, and just feasting throughout the night. If you think of like Game of Thrones, maybe Game of Thrones without the death and sex will give you an idea of like the, what the feasting's like. Why don't we have that now? Smaller families, we contracept and abort ourselves to extinction, look at Europe, a case in point with Europe. Any family that you have is spread across the United States, and a lot of them aren't even practicing anything, Christian, Protestant, anything. And, and the thing that I sculpted out to you, you could find this in 17th century uh, Sweden, that was Lutheran, or in 17th century Netherlands, which was Calvinist. It's not like a specific Catholic thing. But you, you have family that's fallen away. You have family that's spread out. You have family that's contraceptive and aborted itself out of extinction. You have friends. You probably don't have as many as they used to do in the back day, in the, in the old days, because remember, there was an extended family. You had your cousins, your aunt, uncles, your aunts, your second cousin. Everybody lived close by. You had all these friends through the church and through the small town that you lived in. Everybody knew everybody. And now we have like two or three close friends we see a couple of times a year, three times a year or whatever. Of course, I'm making some generalization, sir. I'm certainly there's, there's friends that you see more often than not. But we're all detached. And the most important thing is back then in Paschal Tide, society reinforced it. It was a Christian world, whether you're in Spain or the Netherlands or Sweden or in Russia or the Orthodox. Society reinforced this idea of its Easter time, it's Christmas time, whatever it is, time to feast. Not like in the Mardi Gras, concupiscent, sinful way, but it's just a time to be happy. And you celebrate with this gigantic extended group of family and friends. You'd have festivals, you'd go to mass, you'd have great meals, great drink, and you would celebrate. Every time we think of celebrate, we always think of vices now. No, you could celebrate with virtue. 
This is what we did, and now you look around and it's crickets. You don't see festivals going on in your little town or big city that you live in in America. Why? Because America is no longer Christian. Go to the episode, is America deserving a chastisement? It's a secular world, secular country with pockets of, of Christianity and some you know, really fervent pockets of super Christianity. But as a whole, society's not reinforcing this. You're not going down to the town square to go to the Easter festival for eight days. Most people don't even know, and I'm not gonna even attack the Protestants here, but even most Catholics don't know that we celebrate Easter. That's how, for eight, for eight days, that's how detached we are. We see Christmas Day and Easter as this buildup, right? You hear all the Christmas music and the gifts and all the secular Santa. Christmas comes, you're hearing all the music, even though the 12 days of Christmas are after Christmas, but everything builds up to Christmas and it's just like, next day you go to work. Easter is even worse. We celebrate 40, 46 days essentially of Lent. Easter comes, Easter Monday, oh, back to work. See, we're so detached from our Christian heritage. We're so detached from our Christian past. We contracepted and aborted our family and our friends, and, and we just live in this foreign world. So when the woman that I'm, I'm courting asks this question, it's an extremely legitimate question because most of us, what do we do? We see our friends and family occasionally, and we're screen addicted. Let's be real. There's no festivals. We're all screen addicted. We just go back to normal. So it's a good question for her to ask, because it's, it, it makes me wax nostalgic and wistful to the way Christendom used to be, whether it's Catholic Christendom or Calvinist or Lutheran. Guys, post in the comments. Let me know if you agree or disagree. Do you, do you want to go back to these days? Uh, it was sort of like the Johnny Depp, Juliet Binoche movie, Chocolat. Maybe it gives you an idea of these small little towns and how they used to celebrate. Do you miss that or do you like the way it is? I'd like to hear from you. Please hit the notification, subscribe, and share button. Share with other people. Until next time, take care. God bless and pray.